time to distill lemon verbena. I'm just going to pick the tops of it to there. I find that the leaves towards the bottom, especially if the weather has been dry, are quite high in citral and they'll give it the hydrosol a, uh, a coarser note. If I just get the flowering buds like that and the top parts of the plant I'll achieve a very sweet typically lemon verbena hydrosol. Oh, Christmas spices as well. Christmas spices. Mm -hmm. This is Olga and I discussing the lemon verbena. Being a biochemist, I'm trying to get her to be scientific. She's worse <laughs> than me. She says it smells like Christmas. What <laughs> happen if you put wooden parts? Well, I think that will get the um, coarser aspects of the plant. Um, Whereas if we're working with the young flowers and the buds about to flower and the young buds, just common sense and observation says to me that they'll be the, the sweetest and the youngest part of the plant. And that's what I'm hoping to achieve today is to get that true lemon verbena scent without those harsher notes coming through that are in the older leaves and in the twiggy bits. And if you're working on a small still like this, and not doing it commercially, these are this is what you are able to achieve. So Olga and I have stripped now stripped um, the lemon verbena leaves and flowers off and it's just nice and loose in the column there because I really want the steam to be able to spiral through it and get really good contact with the surface area. So I'd sooner do several columns to use up what's in my basket and to get a really nice quality result. I've got some rye flour and I'm mixing it in my little bowl here to a paste because once I put the column on the boiling water I want to plug up all the seams of my still so I don't leave so I don't lose any steam because most of those volatile essential oils are going to come out in the steam in the first 10 minutes of distilling. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so we've got my shower pump is on. I've got it on high actually because it's amazing how hot that water gets. So I'm wanting quite a strong um, flow of water around the condenser to keep it cool. Now I'm going to place the column on top of the boiling water, quickly place the onion dome on before I lose my steam, attach my bird's neck, one neck, to here, tighten everything up. My right arm. I'm just going to the main place where the steam is going to escape is around here and around here. So before it gets too hot, I'm just going to plug up that steam for the rye flour place. We use rye flour because um, it stays reasonably malleable and it doesn't bake on so hard that it cracks. And also it's just something organic. I'm not having to introduce any chemicals or anything. And it's easy to wash off as well. And if I want to do a uh, second distillation, it's, it just comes away when I take the lid off. And it's kind of nice to work with, really. So you there I'm starting to lose my precious oils and I can smell it. There's this beautiful aroma now of... Um, lemon verbena coming out. Oh. We're just getting those plugged in as much as possible because I'm not really distilling for essential oil. I'm going to turn the heat down as well. And 
and not that such frantic. So now I'm just checking to see where I'm losing steam and it's looking pretty good. Around this side. So that's quite nicely plugged up. Now I can tell where the steam is, my temperature gauge by touching it. So it's about here at the moment, so I'd better get my beaker ready because the distillates will start coming out very shortly. Yes, that part there is hot, so it's going to be coming down any minute. Wash the dry flour off my hands. There we are, we're starting to flow out now. I catch those first few precious drops. Now, who says lemon verbena doesn't produce much oil? I mean, that's a big wadge of oil there. So that's my 25 mils. So now Olga and I will test the pH of that. You can see how the hydrosol is very cloudy. So in a few days, that cloudiness will settle in um, all the different... Um, components and that will sort of settle down and separate out but that's that's amazing wow little pH reader here so I've got about 50 mils of hydrosol and I'm going to take a pH reading on my hydrosol at 50 mils I put the um, pH reader into the beaker and just let it stabilize So it's settling at 5.8, but it's still dropping. It'll probably end up by going to about... No, it looks as though it's settling at 5.7. takes it a while sometimes. It'll probably settle at about 5.6. So I know that I've got... No, 5.7, I think. Which compared to my clary sage which is this one here. Very sage. Mm. Oh no, it's not. That's eucalyptus. That one's rosemary. Now I'm just sitting quietly on my second distillation and um, the wind's blowing, it's a lovely sunny day and I'm infused with the beautiful aroma of lemon verbena and it's giving me a sense of well-being and Olga is left feeling in a very fine uplifted state of mind and the other people in the garden are wandering around. Um, being quite affected by the beautiful aroma as well so that's what distilling is all about for me where I've picked the plant out of the garden it's not a troublesome plant to grow and it produces such a wonderful result it's such a gift 